know that rugby league players play other sports in their spare time, golfing, fishing, and even show jumping. But did you know that Paul Wood does judo? <laughs> The prop who's in his 11th year at Warrington, in a season where the club are challenging for honours on all fronts, he wouldn't think he would have time for anything else. Paul, most people know you, being on a rugby pitch, why judo? I sustained an injury, I dislocated my shoulder and I was given a rehab programme and I uh, went away and did it. And when I come back and made my comeback game against Catalan Dragons uh, beginning of 2008, uh, my first game, I dislocated my shoulder again. I was devastated. I thought I'd done everything I could to uh, rehabilitate the shoulder, but it, it just wasn't strong enough when I come back. And I realised that I needed to do something extra. So from there, I just I, I started getting back into martial arts. It's just something I've always really been keen on when I was younger. And one uh, pre-season, I just went down and tried it and just fell in love with it. Would you say martial arts then is a good way to prepare for those rugby tackles out on the field? No, not really. It's, it's a different, it's a different kind of uh, contact. But what I was using it for was, um, you know, you, you get your arms bent a lot, and you, your arms are outstretched and in vulnerable positions, and it's a bit similar to rugby. So that's why I was using judo and, and wrestling, uh, just to make sure that my, my shoulder was, you know, prepared to uh, to stand up to to that type of pressure. So when you're on a rugby pitch, you're paid to be out on the field. Does it worry you that you're doing another contact sport? You know, you, you don't get worried. Obviously, the accidents can happen. I've seen people get injured. But, well, I injured someone on one of my first sessions in judo. Uh, we stood at one side of the mat and they put a yellow belt on the floor halfway. So I was stood at one end of the mat and uh, this guy, Steve, was stood at the other. And the first person to grab the yellow belt had to take it back to their side and he grabbed it first and he ran at me and it was basically a rugby drill. It wasn't really a judo <laughs> drill. And, as he ran at me, I tackled him and he broke his leg <laughs> and uh, I was devastated and uh, it was a black belt at judo and I thought six weeks when he comes back he's going he's gonna to really <laughs> kick my bum but uh, it was way to start though. Yeah, he, he, but he was really, uh, he, he was, you know, he said accidents happen uh, but that's the only injury I'd really seen at, at judo in the first session. I got a bit worried after that but uh, uh, other than that you don't really worry too much. You've been at Warrington for over 10 years now. Are you a different person that walked on, out onto the pitch 10 years ago? When I first arrived at the club, you know, I was 18 years of age, probably had a big ego and uh, at that age, I think a lot of 18 year olds and I see it now with the young kids coming through. Uh, when I come into a first team environment, there was players like Alfie Langer, Twerven Nico, Andrew G, uh, Mark Hilton. And if you, if you have an attitude problem or an ego, you know, you, it soon gets taken out of you. And uh, you just learn, I learned to respect people a lot more. Uh, no, and treat people how you, you wish to be treated, I suppose, in a way. And uh, but I think that's just a lot of a lot of teenagers learn that growing up, not just in rugby league. So uh, yeah, definitely a different person. Talking about the youngsters coming through the ranks, what advice would you have for them? Even even when you're working hard, you don't get the things that you want. You know, there's times where you feel you probably should be picked in a team, and, and you're not picked. Um, you know, times where you think you maybe should be starting as a player and, you, and you, you, you're you added to the bench. But you've just got to keep working hard, never never give up. Because, uh, you know, I had a lot of people doubting me uh, from a young age, really, because of the position that I played. I was always one of the smallest forwards on the field. Uh, but I had to work really hard to, to build my strength up, to, you know, work on my ball angling skills and uh, just really kept working hard. And I'm 29 now and I'm, I'm still working just as hard. Um, as I was when I was 18 so I think you know it, it's an old saying but like the hard work does pay off. Well as for any professional sportsman there's highs and lows in the career psychologically and mentally you seem very focused but how do you deal with the highs and the lows? It's difficult you've got to have a, a strong family behind you. you know, your family play a big part in that when you when you deliver the major blow. I think probably one of the most disappointing things for me I've had to deal with in my career was uh, in 2009 when uh, Warrington got to Wembley, first time in 32 years and uh, I, I sustained a broken leg and meant that I missed the first Challenge Cup final and I uh, was devastated. I kept visualising me on the podium like lifting the cup and I worked so hard to try and get there the year after. How important is family to you, being able to be successful in rugby league? I've never really used family as a, as, as a drive as such, uh, they've always kept me on the straight and narrow really and uh, 
played a big part in where I am today. But when you have kids, you sort of use them as your motivation. Well, I do anyway. Um, so I've got two kids now, and uh, you know, I want I want them to be proud of the dad, and uh, you know, I want them to be able to hopefully tell their kids, you know, played at Wembley, lifted the Challenge Cup, and hopefully they can say, you know, he won the league or whatever's going to come in in the future. For you, what lessons has rugby league taught you? Everything comes at a price and you only get what you put in. You know, I've had so many setbacks. From being, started playing when I was 11 years of age and even, even then I had setbacks. People saying that wasn't good enough. I wasn't big enough for the position that I played. You've got to turn that into a positive. Even at 11 years of age, I, I wanted to prove people wrong. It's been a tough journey, but I think one of the main lessons I've learned is discipline and uh, hard work and, and that's what you need. Uh, you need a level of skill as well, but um, it's, I don't think at the minute, I don't think it's one of the main attributes. I think that you can, you can help people with skill, but you can't sort of coach them, uh, you know, that determination and, and that work ethic sort of comes within. And uh, if they've got the two, the two main uh, ingredients, then you can learn on the skills. So for me, that's a massive part of um, not just rugby league, but I think just in life in general. Well, for you this season, how has it been for you compared to previous ones? I'm getting a bit more game time this year. Uh, I've had a couple of injuries, so, you know, with Adrian Morley missing out uh, with an injury, meaning that, you know, I'm, I'm playing like 60, 70 minutes in, in the games and uh, I'm not complaining. It's, it's something that I've, I've, you know, I've been asking for. I wanted more game time off Tony and uh, he's, he's, uh, he's finally given it me now. So, yeah, I'm really pleased with with how it's going so far, but I'm enjoying it and that's the main thing. I think if you're enjoying it, then you're going to get the best out of yourself. You started off slow at scoring at the start of the season. You've had your fair share recently. What would you put that down to? I don't want to make an habit of scoring tries because it gives props a bad name, I think. So um, I'm getting a bit of stick off uh, a few of the lads, but uh, yeah, no, it's, it's just... It's just the like my teammates around me. I've got like people like Michael Monaghan running from dummy half. Um, you know, Chris Bridges even slotted in into the forwards and you know creating a lot of a lot of open space for us. And uh, you know, it's running off Richie Marler and Lee Breers. You know, the, the, the good halfbacks and they're going to put you through all. So if you're running the right lines and something I've been trying to be work on uh, this season, then you know you, you're going to go over for the odd try every so often. So. Uh, yeah, not doing too bad, getting over the whitewash at the minute. You dedicated a recent try at Saints to Paul Derbyshire. Was he a significant person throughout your career? Yeah, without Paul, um, I wouldn't won't be sat here today really. And uh, not not only did he sign me at the club, but he sort of um, turned me from a boy to a man in a way. You know, he taught me a lot of lessons, and he was the one that. Um, you know, instilled the, the work ethic really because he was such an hard worker and uh, he put a lot of time and effort into the young lads and, uh, you know, it, it, it's paid off with us. Yeah, he's, uh, you know, he's a, he's a great man to know and I owe him a, a lot really. Injuries have played a part in your career. Would you ever quit through an injury? I, I would never quit through an injury. Uh, you do think different, I think, when you've got kids. You put your, your health first, but um, I've seen so many players play on with injuries and you know, I don't think sometimes the fans realise what players put the bodies through. Uh, they play with painkilling injections, you know, people's shoulders are hanging, you know, more or less coming out the socket before they step to a field. And they're putting injuries off and, and um, operations off, you know, maybe three, four months so they can finish the, the season. Um, but no, I don't think I'd, I'd quit with, with an injury. I've, I've dislocated my shoulder like three times and I've always come back. And I'm probably stronger now than I have been before I did it, so uh, you can always get yourself back fit. Yeah, it's just uh, it's more of a mental block, I think. When you get injured, it's, it takes time to get a bit of confidence. But that's, again, that's why I went into the judo. I needed the confidence and, uh, you know, it's, it's just a bit of dedication and hard work. What does the future hold for you? Well, at the minute, um, obviously, I'm still playing rugby. I'm contracted for the rest of this season. Uh, then I've got another two years at Warrington. So, um, yeah, I'm concentrating fully on my rugby for the next couple of years. Um, myself and Mickey Ayum have uh, just set a personal training business up as well. So we're, we're going down the avenue of, you know, when we finish, uh, then 
you know we've got hopefully got a small business to look back on and uh, and to help us out it's it's pretty tough i've seen a lot of players finish rugby and the career ends and they, do, they don't still don't know what they're going to do so we're forward planning that's a lot of good stuff really what uh, warrington are helping us with uh, they don't just um, you know, leave you to it. They sort of put in courses in place for us now, and they put in. Uh, we have little seminars. With uh, we had like an accountant in the other week, which is going to help uh, young lads hopefully with the wages. So, yeah, setting something up for the future I think is massively important. So, uh, yeah, uh, company's called Tri Fitness Training. So if anyone's interested, <laughs> give us a give, look us up on Google.